Alright, so right now, there's not much uh, running on like the sites I put most of my volume on. So I'm just going to play a few tables here of uh, mid-stakes ACR. Top three tables are 510. Bottom two tables are... Um, I'm getting led into on this board. I think this one of these players was singing out, and this is Big Blimer's button. So, beautiful. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to play some mid six here. Top three, five, ten. Bottom left, two, four. Bottom right, three, six. I, I don't play a ton of volume on ACR, so I'm going to be somewhat readless. And can four bet or call. Um, versus half pot. No, I'm still gonna defend this. Good turn, obviously. Probably a turn he's supposed to check a bunch on. And because he bet so big on flop, I'm probably going to play blocks on turn. I think this puts his range in the most uncomfortable spot. And like, as you can see, if he's like check folding, then like, uh, not that he can't have check folds on that turn, obviously, but then there's a lot of merits to attacking that spot. Like normally, if he had bet um, one third on the flop, then I'm going to use a bigger size on turn. But because the pot's already so big, I don't really need to bet bigger than one third there. Um, my, my range is also a little stronger. So I actually don't have as many like low equity bluffs so I probably want to start just like betting some hands like jack 10 there having the jack of diamonds will increase the EV of this bet I'm just gonna get check raised a bit less um, good turn probably can play on this turn over bet and check uh, complete brick and I think like basically any 10 can make it in here. He doesn't have much 10x, so. Um, not, it doesn't, let's not say he won't have 10x, and so this hand will have, like it's not like I have a three street with this hand, but I think uh, on turn this hand is going to be strong enough. I could check turn, um, but I don't think I have to do a ton of checking with 10, turn 10x in that node because my opponent just lacks 10x. Like, I'd probably need to check more of my, like, top pairs. On, obviously, on, like, an ace or, like, you know, a high card. Because he's going to have more floats that connect with a high card than the 10. Um, might have went a little too big here. Not a big deal, but... I went like a little too big here. I prefer to have just made it like 20.5. Um, but yeah, not a full frequency thing either. But it is cut off button big blind, so I definitely can do some of this. Uh, not in love with this spot. But this hand's probably going to blast off a fair amount. We block ace jack suited, block pocket queens, um, block aces. This turn, probably just gonna go bet, bet, bet. Cause like he's gonna have so many call, call folds here. And like he doesn't have enough Jack X for this river to really concern me. And like I block, you know, a lot of them. Get it through.
It's actually like a deceptively good river because I think the way I, like, I get called mainly by his Jack X. Now there's less Jack X and he can't really have a set. Right? He can't have a set of, um, he can't have a set of uh, Jacks very often. Just check to the river and value it. The two pair get called by worst two pair. Interesting check check. Uh, I don't think this hand wants to do anything except check. It's non-zero. We show down and beat like king queen or something. It's very interesting if we check any bets, just because. It's not a line you see a ton of bluffs in, right? Very like easy spot to just bluff flop. But again, we can show down here and win sometimes. I don't really expect to see a ton of bluffs here, but yeah. It's, the call there is almost worth some information. If I see a bluff, um, it's useful. Seeing that hand, like, doesn't tell me everything, but it makes me somewhat likely, uh, I'm gonna flat this this time. Uh, actually, am I? No, I'm not. Um, sorry. If I see, like, when I see this hand, it's like, I'm kind of starting to suspect this guy kind of just, like, you know, plays his hand. Uh, obviously he's a reg, and that's, like, an exaggeration, but just, like, that line, like, playing jacks in that manner, um, is very much just, like, jacks wouldn't mind checking down the river and then, like, betting small to get a really wide call, right? Like, he's not really thinking of his range, he's just thinking, like, this is what my hand wants to do. That's not to say, obviously, you can't have checks on that board, but the way the hand played out, the first time I see it, it's like, okay, that's like, that's how you want to play that hand. Um, do you have the, the bluffs in there? Do you have, um, you know, it's almost like pure garbage. Maybe not. Maybe he literally just has, like, you know, jacks through kings and, like, a sliver of some weak ace X. So he's, like, only value in that line he bet really small so it's so whatever but i think it's like again yeah if i if i call there and i see like i don't know like queen eight of clubs or something it's like useful information because then like the inverse of that could be true where it's like he actually just like has a ton of bluffs in this line um so i think like even though the call's probably losing it's worth some ev so like the information is worth something in that like really small line and like i think like, actually having two fours is like a better bluff catcher than like a lot of other hands i could have um because like when he takes that size i don't really expect to see an ace but like yeah, i block at least some ace four which you know if you're going to check down an ace on that board ace four makes sense and you can three bet that pre even offsuit ace four could three bet free and then you know you check down and then uh i unblock basically all of his bluffs because all of his bluffs the flop i believe was like a seven five or something like that so like if he threw out a four in his hand he's probably gonna bet flop because he has like a, you know some showdown or sorry some backup equity and then obviously if he's a four in his hand he's got a pretty low showdown hand so i think my hand is like fine but uh, I'm trying to, I think this is the same thing when you're playing live, why it's like bad to just like, you know, people muck their hands because they don't want like people to see what they had. But then like if you muck, say you muck the loser, then you don't get to see what your opponent called you with. And I always think like, I mean, I don't know this guy and he's been playing 6-6 six, six over 18 hands. Probably variance, but like chance he's playing too loose. Oh, sorry, too tight. Uh, but yeah, so the same thing. I would really encourage you if you're playing live to um, 
never do that because you're going to use the information better than your opponent does. So them seeing your hand is less of a concern than not getting to see their hand. Unless you know you're doing something, unless you already know that opponent plays, you're doing something super exploitative that you definitely don't want them to see. That could be the only reason I would see doing that. Um, oh, I'm sorry. For some reason, this is supposed to be bigger, but so it's not a big deal. Um, anyways, would be a good spot to have river to flush because my opponent uh, will not expect me to have many flushes in this line. Kind of an awkward spot now. Uh, versus the overbet, I think. It's interesting, because you can have like queen x of, I actually do think I want to value bet. Because I don't think like I get check called by a hand that I lose to. But I can definitely have some bluffs here. Uh, ace, king, I'm gonna check turn. But this is a little dicey. But I think, again, like, he can have like hands like queen six, queen five, just queen x of spades. But I definitely leave myself open to getting... The deuce is, like, I don't think super relevant, though. Obviously, this is a situation I put myself in. So I'm trying to think. How thin can you do this with? Yeah, I thought... Basically, this is the, that kind of hand I thought might show up in his range. Like... I think the mistake he made there was he like checked the river so quick in a spot where he has to think about that spot because when he when I check back and call an overbet uh, it's it's a very interesting spot because like when I check back and call an overbet I obviously have a bunch of king x right but I have a lot of non-king x that are either bluff catchers or potential bluffs, but again, he doesn't know how I play that spot, so he might think I bet a lot of bluffs on the flop. I bet a lot of draws on the flop. So he might think, like, I have a lot of just king x when I call the turn or bluff catches. And, like, a lot of that range will show down. If I have, like, mainly bluff catches and king x and he's overbet the turn, then, like, I'm not that incentivized to bet the river because he's polarized himself. And then on that river, I think a lot of people just kind of, like, check because it's like, you know, I have king dukes. Like, why would I bet? But I th the reason I bet was, like, I thought he could have a bunch of, like, you know, hands like queen x of spades, um, queen six, queen five. He obviously had queen five of spades, so he did both. But I thought he could just have, like, you know, hands of that nature. Um, and when he checks so quickly, he's not going through the process of, like, weighing, you know, this is something we talked about, like, in my session on Tuesday, like, weighing the cost-benefit of, like, okay, if I check... Like, this is what I'm getting value from, right? I can, like, I can check raise versus a portion of his range. Um, I get value versus bluffs. But, like, again, I don't have, in his, in his mind, I shouldn't have a ton of bluffs in that line, right? So he's actually going to lose a lot of value because most of the value he gets is probably from his bluff, my bluff catches. So the only thing he gets value against when he checks is, like, a, a king that's strong enough to bet, right? So it's, like, you know, it's a lot to think of in that moment. But it just felt like, to check so quickly and then check shove the river, it feels like that spot needs more attention. So that kind of like led me to call. Pocket nines versus the size. So I'm probably going to defend. Top left versus uh, multi way action. I'm just going to fold the jack five, even versus small bet. Uh, but yeah, fold versus the 
called for, but. I think it's important too to like, my initial instinct is like shit, <laughs> like when I bet the king deuce. And like, I am aware I'm betting a bit too, maybe not too thin, but just like, I think any king is potentially worth a bet in that spot. But I think like, I initially like was like, okay, like I think like, especially again, cause he checked so quickly. I think that's the mistake he made. That's why it's always good to like, take your time with your decisions in spots that are like complex. And like, that would definitely be, if you bet flop quickly or, you know, I, I still would encourage you not to check call quickly. But if you say you bet flop quickly, not a big deal because like most, or like raise pre-flop pre quickly or even three bet quickly, whatever. Like that stuff's not important because that stuff's pretty easy. Like most people know how to play those spots. Um, without much thought but like over bet turn uh play river spot i don't think he's you know like the speed at which he quick quick check the river is like he would have to know when i over bet the king turn every brick river i want to check because this you know you'd have to have some sort of like thought process like that right you have to have like planned ahead and i don't think most people do that Okay, this guy's playing like 12-8. So I'm kind of like treating this like I'm in the cutoff. So it's a bit loose, but it's fine. Whenever you say this, though, you get three bet by. Oh, this guy must be a short stack, right? I, I don't know for sure, but. Because if he's a weaker player, I might call this. Um, I check. And if he checks again, I will block the river. Doesn't really change anything. The only thing this changes is it's now more difficult for my opponent to find bluffs because his bluffs need to be um, asex. So now he has to, no, it's not, again, he could, we'll see if he checks back like ace five. Yeah. So like, <laughs> again, this stuff's really important to think about, right? Like that is his bluff on the river basically. And he gave it up. I mean, sure. He can beat some 10 X of diamonds, some queen X of diamonds. Um, but the way his range gets to that river, he doesn't really have many worse hands than an ace. Unless again, he's bluffing all of his under pairs as well in that line. So then, if that's the case, he can bluff all those and give up his ace three. But, you know, at least he's not over bluffing that note because he gave up that hand. So that would mean all my hero calls would be like, you know, neutral EV. Or sorry, neutral, <laughs> zero EV. But if you just like. If you're not thinking about the spot like that, that you see a three, you don't really like make a note of it. It's like okay, now it's like this guy probably doesn't under or doesn't overbluff certain spots. <laughs> Good flop. I still don't really play many raises here, but this could be a mistake. Deep. But start with flop. So there's the aces and ace queen. Doesn't really like suits don't matter because he has ace queen off full frequency. Okay, I think I have to raise now. Actually, with the Queen of Hearts, I think it's... If I didn't have the Queen of Hearts... Okay, this... The board ran out about as bad as it can.
I think this is like the worst hand I can value it. Good turn. <laughs> I'm thinking if this hand should check raise flop. Fours with this with a heart. I think I'm gonna call. It's also like very easy for him to just have like complete air here. Because he can have like, if he's playing the spot somewhat correctly, he should just have like some just like jack x in this line, or like you know ace x. Like I just think it's blind versus blind, so he should just like value a bit thinner, and have like. I, my note on him is he can't bluff tough spots, so uh, we'll see. I mean he has aces, <laughs> so not much to think about there. And like if I'm continuing the flop there with forwards, it's gonna be I have to bluff on some future streets. Don't and like I'm only doing a blind versus blind because he has more garbage, like the ten, ten eights, you know, jack eights, that type of stuff. He has a bit more like top pairs, obviously, but he has like you know ace twos. He's like just like because typically uh, your opponent's range will just be stronger. I think this is marginal at best to float this. Night Islands isn't great, but I'm still just gonna value bet here. Or bet, sorry. I mean, the, this is a spot where the first time this note happens, we'll say it's a little annoying because my opponent might think I don't rep anything for the line I took, right? Like I stab half pot at three quarters, um, not knowing that that's like, you know, I'm going to play the queen x I have in that line. I mean, I'm a little narrow in that sense that he might think I raise a bunch of my queen x on the flop. I think this hand, I think if I have like a heart, say like 10, eight, like I think I wanna have a heart to block hands like king eight, king 10. Although some of those might bet the turn, but like I think having the 10 of hearts could be good to use in like my big bet range. Cause then I block like king 10 off with the king of hearts. But I think like this, like I have a bunch of like, obviously if he's checking that hand on the turn, then he's, this plays quite good. As in like his range is probably too strong. If he's checking a bunch of like that, like especially queen six is like a pretty, very uh, strong betting candidate on the turn. Um, to finish my thought. Yeah, like, so this spot the first time I go like half pot three quarters in a spot like that is like, we'll say it's a little annoying because yeah, like he might think I'm imbalanced in that line where I have a bunch of queen X that play that way. I would have all my flushes that play that way. No, sorry, not all my flushes, obviously like some could over bet the river and some not all would bet the turn. Um, but that like the flush draws I play that way, especially cause like when I take, when I bet the turn, on that turn, I'm gonna have more like non-showdown flush draws and like weaker flush draws, and they're not gonna all like over the river. So I'm just gonna fold this in. Like we want our opponent to have like these cards, right? Like queen jack of clubs, ace jack, ace ten of clubs. Like so, bluffing in that node with like the ace of clubs, jack of clubs combos, 
very bad. All right, I'm gonna probably just call it there. We went for like about a half hour, and then I'll uh, let me know if you have any questions.